I'm going to do something that I've never done before, and that's to show you a little bit how I edit video. This is a process that I have refined over the past five years. I started out with PowerDirector, and since then I've moved up to, vastly up to, DaVinci Resolve. And uh, I like this program so much that I stopped using the free version, which is still very capable, and bought a licensed dongle to use with it so that it'll give me the extra features. Not that you, you uh, need those too much to edit video with this, but every little bit helps, I find. Anyway, um, the big thing that it did, the licensed version, was it allowed me to use two graphics cards uh, together with it, which really speeds things up. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for it to convert these clips that I just imported into what it calls optimized media. My camera records in XAVCS, and that's a highly compressed, very math intensive for the processor. If the editor has to work with that footage, it runs a lot slower. So what it does is it converts it to DNX HD, and that's less compressed. It's a lot bigger, but it's less compressed, and the editor handles it easier. Okay, I just finished up, and I just walked in, so that's good timing. I like that. I'm going to pull my cocoon in here, nice and tight, and my armrest is feeling very good. This video, actually, as you can see, is the armrest, so maybe I'll try to rotate the desk a little bit better to give you a better angle. All right, so this is the media tab. I'll go to the edit tab. That's where all the fun happens. Here are all the clips that I want to edit. Uh, I didn't start with that one. I'm going to start with this one right here. Bring that down, drop it in. And first thing I'm going to do is change it to dual screen. And that gives me this stuff over here. And then it opens all this up over here for the important stuff. Now, this is a very simple video. 21 clips, uh, it shouldn't take long to edit. It will probably take somewhere around three to maybe four hours though by the time I'm done. So I'm not gonna show all that obviously, I'll just go show the highlights. First thing I do, you can see down here, this is the, um, the voice track. And I'm gonna boost up the volume so that I can hear it better and I can see the waveform. Right. I've been working on my new desk and in this video I just... I do that to every track and then I adjust as I go through to fix the volume as needed. So if this is actually where I started, and I think it is, I'll cut off this stuff back here. I, uh, I've, been working on my new, I've been working on my new desk and in this video I just want to cover making the arm... Okay, I got some more crap at the start. Yeah, I've been working on my new, I've been working on... I hate that when I don't leave myself enough of a, enough time at the beginning. I've been working on my... There we go. I've been working on my new desk, and in this video I just... Usually I'm a little more careful about that. So what I'll do is I'll try to hide that a little bit there. Maybe I'll slide the track ahead just a little bit. And then I can pull this back. So that I got a bit of a silence there before I start talking. I've been working on my new deck. Still doesn't sound right. I've been working on my new... I've been working on my new desk and... Okay, that looks better. Since this is for this channel, <laughs> I'm not going to be too particular with it. But that's the kind of thing that I do. I try to make everything as good as, like I was saying before, when I was making this cushion that I'm using here on my desk, that I'm not overly particular about you know the details, but I am very particular about the details where this stuff is concerned. So I try to be, I try to make it as well as I can. Top of this and then material to cover it up. 
But the backer doesn't have to be anything fancy. I've got the piece of plywood from my old wife before I changed that over. And all I did was rip it down the side. Okay, now I say I rip it down the sides. That's where I need to bring in the next clip. And that's clips that I actually filmed before I did this. So I'll put that on top of this one. And... The ripping starts there, so... I'll cut that back. Rip it down the size. And then I'll fade that in too. That makes it sound more natural. And I'm also going to... I'm going to fade the the video in. Down the size or width. And that looks better. Or width, I should say. And, it, and then the other thing I do, because I filmed this in 4K, that gives me a lot of latitude for uh, zooming in or moving this thing around. This is framed perfectly. I got the right amount of space above my head, like it's not cut off and it's not too much. But if I was a little bit too far out, I could always zoom in and fix that with the 4K. I can go to 1.5 on the zoom and then still be able to render it to what I'm using now is uh, as what I consider my standard, which is 2560 by 1440, which is 1440p. So. The old light before I change that over and all I did was rip it down the size or width, I should say, and then cut it the length of the miter. So you've seen enough of me cutting here. So I would cut that and cut the audio. And then I bring in the other clip that shows me cutting it off on the miter saw. Miter saw clips are pretty loud, so watch that again. Let's rip it down the size or width, I should say, and then cut it the length of the miter saw. And now what I've got here on here, and now what I have. So here's something else, right? If I make a mistake saying something, in order to cover that up, I can put a clip over top of it and then trim that out. So right here, I did that. I'll reduce this on the miter saw. And now what I've got here on here, and now what I have on here, it. See, I can trim that out. Split that clip and bring it over here and then pull the whole thing back. And then you can't see that happening because this video covers that up. This is a good trick to have in your arsenal. And cut the length of the miter saw. And now what I have on here is... Um, so then I've shown enough of that. So what I have on here is some strips of glue on the back and there's some dabs of epoxy on the other side. And it's going to scrape that off. And make use of a new scraper for that. Try that out. So right before I drop it on the counter or the bench, see that big noise there? I'm going to cut the clip. But I think I tried to save that last part better. And normally when I do manage to spit it out better, it's the very last instance. So it'll be right here. And then I'll cut that back. A new scraper for that and try that out and try that out and see how well it works. See, that's better than just try it out, right? Right? Am I right? And so I don't need that video and I don't need try that out and try that out and try that out for that and try that out. Pull that back, pull this in. Scrape that off and make use of a new scraper for that and try that out and see how well it works. Now you won't see that I'm not speaking in sync here because I'm going to take the next clip, which is this one, and put it on top of it. All right, and so it shows me starting to scrape here. 
and I'll bring that back and I'll blend that in as well. And make use of a new scraper for that and try that out and see how well it works. So I'll show so much of that at regular speed and then you know the cool thing to do these days is to speed everything up. So I'll do that. Hang on, I'll get the right thing here. Change clip speed. I'll speed that up to 500%. All right, and see how that looks. Okay, I'm cruising right along with the edit here, but I thought I would pop back in again and show you this. This is what I was talking about before with framing. See, there's a little bit too much space above my head. I can just take that and that looks way better. And then if it's not quite centered, although centered really doesn't matter that much, it depends on where your eye is from frame to frame. I try to keep the viewer's eye consistently on the subject. So if the subject is over here in the previous frame, I try to get what he should be looking at in the next frame very close to that again. Okay, this is going a lot faster than I thought it would. I thought I would stop here and show you some more of what I was talking about before, about keeping the viewer's eyes in an area. You can see that they should be looking down here at the glue gun. And we move to the next frame, which we're not there yet. I'm putting the foam in, that's what they should be looking at. Their eyes should be right here. And so we move into the next frame and that's where I want to keep the view. So what I did was I took this frame and I zoomed it way in because it's up to 1.44. And I also repositioned it, like I moved it over. And that's the beauty of doing things with 4K. You can do that. And, you know, I don't usually go to that this level of uh, trouble to do this kind of a video. But I thought since I was... Uh, showing this video on me making the video that I would show you this little trick. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit too and show you another trick that I use and that's to roll your audio under the clip that it proceeds. So here I'm cutting the sponge. I've got all my parts cut. You can see that the audio for the next clip starts before this clip ends so that you're in effect trimming this much out of your video but you're making the video flow together better this is a variation of the same thing that i talked about before see i've got one clip here blue works just fine for that considering how tight and then i've got this one i cut out a bunch of ramble before this clip started so it doesn't kind of it doesn't lead in really naturally so to make it seem better what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the video across so that this clip the video from this clip overlays this audio on the next clip in the same way and then I'll add a crossfade transition here to make them blur together the hot milk glue works just fine for that Considering how tight this needs to be stretched. And see that plays a lot more naturally than it did before. I'll just show that again. Works just fine for that. Considering how tight this needs to be. I've come to the end of the edit. Originally I was gonna post this video on my scrap bin channel, but I think that this is will probably work better on my second woodworking channel. So I'm gonna to go to the trouble of adding a thing on the end here to show two new videos or two other videos that you will, you know, go look at type of thing. So say up here, you know, check. These out. Normally I have something that's got a little bit more imagination, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I'll keep it simple sometimes and just throw the fuckers off, you know? Um, so I got that there. 
mm, position. I'm going to move that up, say here, and then the two videos will be right in here. And so what happens is I left the video off with me putting the material on, and then it goes hey, through. And on the desk shows a picture of it on the desk and then it'll blend to that now this is pretty quiet here so I'm gonna I'm gonna overlay some music that will start back here somewhere and, and play through this so over here I've got my music that I can select I've got a bunch of stuff from the YouTube library stockpiled here that I can use I've got stuff that I bought so it usually sounds better it's better stuff That's all right, I'm gonna drop that in there and see how it goes. So what I do is I, like I say, I'm gonna start it while I'm still talking here, but I'm going to obviously lower the volume. So we got our audio here, make a keyframe, and then make another keyframe over here where it increases, and then I'll just pull that right down to minus something, minus 13, and then I'll also fade into it so that it's very low to start off. And that will do it. i just I'll do the other side exactly the same way, and then I can bring it in and put it on the desk. Okay, that's a bit too abrupt. So I'll pull that back here, and this keyframe ahead. And that's what keyframes do, by the way. If you haven't edited the video before, that'll, you know, makes that transition. I'll do it. i just I'll do the other side exactly the same way, and then I can bring it in and put it on the desk. So then I go to the end of this, and then I'll chop that off, and then I'll fade this 26. And the same thing here, so that and that sounds good. So all you need to do now is, and how long is it? I've been watching the time. I always watch the time when I'm going through, and this is 11:25, which is not bad for a video that has this much information in it. So what I'll do is I'll go right back to the start and I will watch it through and make adjustments and then after that I'll fix the audio which I think I'm going to do right now because I don't think I'm going to do anything that will affect that. The way you open this you drop it on the track and then you hit this thing here and then you touch that and then this opens up up here and you get this little slider thing here press that and then my presets down here and that's my equalization curve also it compresses the audio so watch what happens I've been working on my new desk and in this video I just want to cover making the armrest pad that goes on there it'll support my arm and I need a backer for it. it's going to be foam on top of so what this does is it, you know, levels out the volume of the vocal track and it also equalizes to this profile. I find the microphone is a little bit tinny in around 2K, so I drop it down there. I also boost up the bass a little bit just to make it sound more fuller. So once that's done, then I'll take it and I'll render it out and it will be done in this form. I have to compress it further though because I'm on a cell network here and my internet is very expensive so I have to <laughs> take this video which would probably be somewhere around two gigabytes and compress that down to somewhere around maybe 300 megabytes. I forgot about this actually. I got this other thing to show. This is the color uh, section of DaVinci Resolve and in this I do a couple things for this particular video I don't have to do a lot 
mainly because of what it is. I don't I don't want to go overboard with it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it, I'm going to brighten it up first of all. I'm going to increase the gain so that it makes it look brighter. You know, not so dark because, you know, everything looks better when it's brighter. But then I don't want it to be washed out either, so I have to wash that. So this is after and then this is before. So if I increase the contrast, that makes it look a little bit more uh, vivid as well. This is it now with the correction and this is it before. You can see a lot brighter, a lot more, I don't know, looks good. So that looks fine for that and I'm probably not gonna have to do anything else with it. The color uh, white balance and all that is perfect on here, it looks good. So I'll just like, grab a still and that puts that over there. You can see it over there. I'll point because I pointed with my mouse actually. And I'll just take the rest of the clips all the way along and highlight those. And then I'll center click. That's the scroll wheel. And what that'll do is that'll apply that same thing to every one of the clips. So then I'll go back to edit. And then when I'm watching through it, working on my new desk, and all those color corrections are already applied and I can, st I can see how they look. If some clips are brighter or, or washed out or something, I can go back to the color tab again and make adjustments like say here, you know, if I see that it's, you know, uh, blown out up here or something like that, or I can see it is actually blown out a little bit on the bench there. So what I'll do is I'll drop down the gain a little bit to correct that or I'll drop down the gamma a little bit but this is a really powerful part of it and it allows you to do all kinds of neat stuff like that I don't know if I'll include this in the video but I'll do it just in case I do I've got the thing rendered out and it's right here and it's 6.57 gigabytes and that's pretty big. That's bigger than I can upload uh, <laughs> given my bandwidth. So I'm gonna open Handbrake over here and open that file with that. Now I've got this set. I've got some settings here and it's gonna render it in the native resolution that the video was, which is 2560 by 1440 and filters i've got some denoise activated here set to medium and what denoise will do is it'll make it so that you can really compress the file a lot further down without losing too much detail it'll take away that really fine grain detail that you get they really don't need for youtube videos and then the settings for it <clears throat> i got to set the constant quality uh, 22 is probably good for this video. I'll see how it renders out. Frame rate stays the same at 23,976. And I've got the encoder preset that at a very slow speed. The slower the speed, within reason, the better it'll do. So then I'll just hit start and code, and that'll re-render the video at that compression setting. And I'm hoping, I'm, I'm thinking that'll be somewhere around 300 megabytes when it's done. 